Hi, welcome to our October newsletter. I'm Yasmin and this is Luke. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, much like the other monthly news newsletters we've done, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the stories uh, from October, of which there have been a lot. Yeah. And probably the first one that makes sense to start on is the fact that the round pound is no more. Yeah. Officially no longer legal tender. Yep, so there was 25 different one pound coin designs. Um, one of those didn't um, enter into circulation, that was the last round pound. Um, and they were in circulation for 34 years? Yeah, it? since 83. Since 83, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think they're going to be really, really missed. A lot of people have them, um, the Great One Pound Coin Race, for example, a lot of people are going to have complete collections or maybe not entirely complete collections. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about what you can do if you've got any leftover round pounds. The first things we would say is that there are a number of, of charities that are accepting yeah. the round one pound coins as donations. Um, in particular, the, the Royal British Legion are going to be accepting the uh, round one pound coin all the way up until the 12th of November, which is Remembrance Sunday. Uh, I can't think of really a better way to get yeah. rid of any of your round pound coins I that mean, you don't really need. If there's a charity that you feel strongly about, they'll definitely be accepting round pound coins. So don't worry about um, don't worry about that because they definitely will accept them. Um, yeah, and it's a great cause. I mean, you're helping charities with your round pounds. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're not gonna, if you're not planning on collecting your your round pound coins, then probably our advice to you would be to get them banked sooner rather than later. Some high street banks are still accepting them. Um, some retailers are, but it's pretty much at the discretion. So it is likely that at some point there just there'll be a cut off date. So if you're not planning on keeping them, I think we would say just take them to the bank now and um, so that you don't lose out in the future. Yeah. Um, and then if you're still trying to complete your collection of one pound coins, you can always try and use the swap centre still. Um, there'll be a lot of um, people swapping on there, people that don't have complete collections, or maybe those that have um, a few of a certain design that they want to get rid of. So yeah, have a look on Swap Centre if you haven't got a complete collection yet. So it's been almost a month now, or over a month actually, since the uh, Jane Austen £10 note entered circulation. There's been um, a lot of you letting us know that you've found them and that you're looking for the low serial numbers and that sort of thing. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the £10 banknote that sold at auction recently. Yeah, so uh, a company in London auction is in London called Spink & Sons. They held a charity banknote auction and uh, unsurprisingly the note that sold for the most was the lowest serial number which was AA01000010 so basically 10, the 10th note produced and that sold for £7,200 um, which is a huge amount of money, a huge amount of money for a £10 note um, I mean, you can. I think you can see it from both sides. Really. Yeah. If you've got disposable cash, you are essentially buying it's, a genuine bit of history. Especially with all the news stories that circulated last year with the release of the mm -hmm. five pound note. Yeah. But even last year, I don't remember a serial number that low selling for that. It's, it's more around four and a half thousand pound yeah. mark for the five pound note. So it must just be all the news and absolutely in the first £10 mm -hmm. banknote and polymer and all that sort of stuff so yeah and there was just they, they sold a sheet of 54 um, banknotes as well and that sold for thirteen and a half thousand pounds um, but the, the, the overarching good news about all of this was the fact that it being a charity auction they raised mm -hmm. 260,000 um, pounds for three fantastic charities so how, whichever way you look at it it's a huge amount of money but they've also raised a fantastic amount for, for fantastic yeah. charities so yeah. We think it's good. Yeah, um, and make sure you do keep looking for those low serial number uh, banknotes, and also the ones um, sort of JA or mm -hmm. anything related to Jane Austen, her birth, her death, anything like that, because they're definitely going to be sought after. Absolutely. We haven't heard of any errors on banknotes yet. No, nothing is nothing, yet. Nothing, yeah. Nothing is yet. Um, Obviously, if we do, we'll let you know straight yeah. away. So in October, we also saw the release of eight brand new 50p coins. Now, for some chain checkers, unfortunately, these aren't in the UK, officially, but they are Isle of Man 50p coins, and these are to celebrate the Platinum Wedding. Yeah, so it was a bit of a surprise, actually. No one was expecting these 50ps to enter circulation. They're all um, different designs of uh, the Queen and Prince Philip um, from their younger days to where they are now, sort of. 70 years of marriage. Yeah. <laughs> Long time. Um, yeah, and no one was expecting these 50 pieces to run into circulation. There was no plans. It just all of a sudden happened. Mm -hmm. So 
we're urging collectors, um, especially on the Isle of Man, because they're the ones that can be able to get hold of them, to look out for these 50Ps, because as we know, the Isle of Man has a population of 87,000, so there's going to be hardly any of these 50Ps around, and if you can get hold of one, or even eight, if you could, that would be amazing and a really, really great collection. Yeah, we're definitely expecting the mintage figures to be low. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if you have any friends on the Isle of Man, just ask them very nicely <laughs> to keep an eye out for you. But yeah, as Yasmin said, if you can get your hands on one of these, then it'd be a brilliant uh, coin to add to your collection. So we've launched the brand new official Change Check Advent Calendar, which has just arrived today. So we'll be sending these out this week. So if you have ordered one, you'll get one soon, just in time for December anyway, for you to open door one. Um, if not, there's still plenty of time to order. You've got until um, November the 17th to order to get your album in time for the 1st of December. And we've had a few requests from uh, people, understandably so, asking us what the coins are in there. Uh, what we don't want to do is spoil the surprise um, for everybody, so we, we're not going to reveal it, but what there will be is every day you open one of the windows, mm -hmm. um, there will be some information on our blog, um, all about that coin, um, some really nice specifications yeah. and lots of details about it. So. Uh, don't worry, you have loads of information all about the coins as and when you open the windows. But what we can say, it's um, a coin from all over the world in each window. And under window 25, there's the official Christmas £5 coin, um, which is very sought after at the moment, being the first UK Christmas £5 coin. So it's definitely worth getting. So we launched our quarter three scarcity index update. We try and um, do four updates a year just to make sure we include the latest mintage figures, um, any new coins that are released in circulation. Um, looking at the two pound coins, um, the Commonwealth Northern Islands went back to number one. Yeah, uh, uh, Kew Gardens stays uh, number one on the 50p chart uh, with a round score of 100. Yeah, and, and to be honest, um, certainly with the Kew Gardens, we can't see that moving yeah. anytime soon. Um, we did have two new additions to the 50p scarcity index, which was the Peter Rabbit 2017 coin and Sir Isaac Newton. Um, but at the moment, these are uh, essentially based on estimated mintages because the mint haven't released them as yet, and we probably wouldn't expect them for a good few months yet. Yeah, uh, probably early next year. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, anyway. Yeah, so I mean, it's always it's a really useful exercise. But to be honest, there's no major changes in the scarcity index update. Um, but uh, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what the results are in Q4. Yeah, because by then, obviously, we would hope that um, Jeremy Fisher, Tom Kitten and Benjamin Bunny, those 50Ps, would have entered circulation and hopefully people would start um, trying to find them by then. And also Jane Austen and World War yeah. won £2 coin, which, you know, nearly November and still those coins have not been released into circulation. Yeah, there's a lot of 2017 coins still to, yeah. still to go. So yeah, we're hoping it'd be a nice flurry at the end of the year. And it'd be it'd be a great way to end 2017 for all you change checkers. Yeah, and then ready for next year. <laughs> yeah. So finally, um, we had our second live coin swap at the Oracle in Reading. It was a great day. We really really enjoyed it. It was very busy, um, and we well we're really pleased that we got to speak to so many of you that came to see us. Um, there was quite a few people that came that travelled. Yeah, some people travelled from over two hours away, which is yeah. which is amazing. Mm -hmm. it was, um, and, and also, I think what's so lovely about it is you've got children mm -hmm. and grandparents and parents all coming up, all equally interested, certainly in the Beatrix Potter coins. Um, and for us, you know, it's what we what's what we are change checker, it's yeah. trying to encourage everybody to check the change. Yeah, and I think. I mean, it was lovely seeing coin collectors, you know, speaking to each other that maybe wouldn't necessarily have had that chance to mm -hmm. meet in person and talk about their coins, their collections and stuff like that because everything is done, you know, online. So, you know, it was great to see so many coin collectors and a lot of you came to show us your collections, which we love to see. Um, yeah, it was a really, really great day and we are looking, hopefully, to do another one. And finally, the Royal Mint have just released their 2014 sales figures, meaning there is a brand new, rarest £5 coin. Yeah, so the 300th anniversary of the death of Queen Anne £5 coin has knocked the 2011 Prince Philip £5 off its top spot. Yeah, so there was 12,181 of these Queen Anne £5 coins. Um, which is quite a significantly lower amount than the Prince Philip £5 coins. Um, 
the Prince Philip five pound coins there was just over eighteen thousand. So you know, yeah, just... yeah. I mean, and obviously we know that that the, the rarer a coin, the mm -hmm. fewer there are. Um, the more collectible it makes it. Yeah, more interest in the coin. Um, and we know that the Prince Philip £5 coin regularly sells for over £50 on, uh, for example, eBay. Um, and we think exactly the same is going to happen with the, Prince, the Queen Anne £5 coin. Um, and maybe even more than £50. Yeah, very possibly. I mean, well, there's, uh, there's around 6000 less. Yeah. So that would, you know, simple supply and demand would dictate that you, you could expect it to, um, to reach a bit more. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it'd be really interesting. If you've got one in your collection or you're looking at getting one, then it's, it's probably a worthwhile, it's a worthwhile thing to do. Um, and to be honest with you, that's about it from a, yeah. a very busy <laughs> October. Um, and next time we see you, it will be the end of November with Christmas just around the corner. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Yeah, and until then, bye bye. <laughs>